Welcome to the Gibbs Cam 2015 series of tutorials. The first tutorial here is going to be preferences, how to set the preferences in Gibbs, which will make you program faster and uh, produce parts faster as well. This is the new interface screen here uh, for the 2015 version and um, throughout all the Gibbs products here. I'm going to open up all my parts here so you can see as we set preferences how things change on here. First thing I'm going to go over is the document page. Now the document page has changed a little bit, uh, some similarity between the older versions as well. This upper portion here has not changed from the previous versions. You still have the origins from the X, Y, and Z. But the lower portion you can see has a, uh, a new box down there that shows the stock size and it says part offset. Now if you're running uh, Gibbs without machine simulation, this will make no difference, so uh, you don't really need to put anything in here. If you are running machine simulation, not regular CPR, but machine simulation, in which you actually have a model of your machine displayed while you're doing cut part rendering, then this will take effect. Otherwise, it will not. Tool change has changed a little bit from where you want tool change. If you click on this, it will ask you where you want the table or the spindle to be uh, in relationship to the table for a tool change. Intermediate tooling, that will be for another video. Um, the upper portion has not changed too much other than now you have under the comment tab part comments that you can put in as well as programmer notes. Machining preferences has been moved over to this page now. Uh, the default setting for machine tolerances, when you load Gibbs, a new version of Gibbs, the supply machining tolerance will be set at one thousandths. I find one thousandths a little too coarse when you're machining splines, and eventually you will be machining splines, whether it is uh, engraving, uh, lettering, things like that. Most of the uh, lettering is made up of splines. So if you want the smoothest possible, change that to one ten thousandths. You'll get a better finish with everything. Um, we'll leave all these default, tool center, cutter radius comp, all this is all default settings here. And global settings uh, is normally uh, default settings to here, so you really don't need to change too much there. Under the help menu, um, some things that people aren't aware of is balloons. Balloons is very helpful. If you turn on balloons, you can hover your mouse over any icon, any menu, and blues will give you a good explanation on how to use that menu. Also under help is shortcuts. If you print this out, this will help you quite a bit in learning the give shortcut menus, the control shift menus, all the hotkeys, things like that. And you just print shortcuts and print it to your favorite printer. The next one is plugins. On plugins, if you go down to posting and over to setup post editor, you have three different choices here disable post editor, internal editor, custom editor. Most people like the custom editor because you can tell it to, uh, when you post code, to tell it to open up your favorite program to look at the code and maybe make any edits if you would like. The default setting is notepad, but you can change this to uh, Predator, WordPad, uh, Shark, uh, Enet, DNC, or your favorite uh, post editor here. So we'll just leave it at Notepad for right now. Then let's jump over to File and down to Preferences. Now there's seven tabs under Preferences here. We're going to leave uh, some of these default settings and some not. Now if you have a question on any of the settings, just go to the Help menu, turn on Balloons, and bring your mouse cursor down to any of the settings and it will give you a good explanation on what those do. We're not going to go over every one of those. We leave the default settings here. You can see the colors on mine are my colors here. That's why I named it Tim's. The default is 3D Systems colors, uh, much like the standard Gibbs colors over the years. So if you uh, want to use that, you can. Or in uh, some other videos, we'll show you how to change the colors in the background and, and things like that. I'm going to turn my back to Tim's. 
you can see the colors change there. Now the uh, printing geometry on toolpath and rendering screen on white, and you have black on white or screen will depend on your printer. So you have to do a little experiment on uh, printing to see what you like the best there. Now the default setting when you, when you load Gibbs is 10 thousandths on the cord height. 10 thousandths on the cord height is a little coarse for me. Let me change this part here to 10 thousandths and you'll see why. Now if I zoom up this part here, you're going to see at 10 thousandths cord height, it's a little bit uh, spline there, a little bit chunky on some of the holes. I'm not the best looking part. But if, if we change this to 1 thousandths, I'll change this to 1 thousandths. You're going to see the parts a lot smoother now. Looks a lot better. Uh, I would recommend you do not change this to one ten thousandths. I've seen some people do that. The part looks very nice on the screen and everything, but it takes up more file size, more space, and slows down your rendering, slows down every pretty much everything, uh, depending on your computer and how fast it is. And it does not improve any accuracy of the G-code output. Internally, the solid model is perfect within Gibbs. So changing this to 10 thousandths or 1 10 thousandths will not change your G-code output. It's, this is visual only. And 1 thousandths for most parts from like an inch diameter up to uh, uh, 60 inch diameter, uh, somewhere around that range will look very nice. The next one is the grid brightness. Turn on the grid here and you can see the grid on mine. I usually like to put the grid to where it's almost invisible, depending on if you're looking on the outside or the inside there, depending on the colors. But I kind of put it so where I can see it. Okay, and that's usually where I like to, to have it. You could always turn the grid off if you don't want to see it. And push it on, turn it back on. The next tab is the interface tab. I always start maximize here, so make sure this is checked and enable the caption is checked. So. When you launch Gibbs, you don't want to just open up in part of your screen. You want to fill up your whole screen. So keep this maximized and get the caption here. A few of these I'm going to leave as default. And a few of them I want to highlight just uh, because they're really useful. I'll kind of show you how to use them. The first one is dialogues roll up. I always like to have that one checked on. That's very nice. And I'll show you why here. Sometimes you'll have a number of menus open, maybe say the body bag and the coordinate system menu. And sometimes they get in the way here when you're doing other stuff. And instead of closing them and opening them back up, if by having dialog roll up selected, you can just select these little push pins here. And you can see they will hide when you move the mouse off. That's a very handy feature. You can always click those again so they don't disappear. So that is dialog roll up. The next one is zoom to mouse cursor. I'm going to uncheck this for right now and uh, go back to my top view. Let's say, for instance, I want to zoom up this little hole here. We'll just highlight that hole. And when I zoom up the part, notice the hole is disappearing off the screen because the normal default it zooms the middle of the screen. So depending on where your part is, that's where um, Gibbs is going to zoom uh, without the zoom to mouse. If you put a checkbox in zoom to mouse cursor, you can see my mouse is sitting just about on that hole there. Now when you zoom, notice how it zooms up where your mouse is. I move the mouse down to here, notice it moves zooms up this particular area. Any area on your part where your mouse is sitting will zoom to the mouse. So very nice feature. I'd suggest you always have this on. The next one I would have on is this open process dialog on offload. Let me uncheck that first. I'm going to open up my tool menu and cam menu. You can see I already have some operations for this part. Now anytime you want to make any changes to an operation as always, you always double click the operation and it brings back the operation, highlights the geometry, brings back the 
process on the left side over here. In order to make the changes, you need to open up the process, make any changes you need to make, close it, redo, and then go on from there. This is the standard way. Double click, open the process, make changes, redo. This will make it a lot faster by clicking on Open Process Dialog and Offload. Now, when you double click an operation, Gibbs will automatically open up the process associated with it. Okay, so, in the operation, just double click, it will bring back the process for you. Make the changes, click Redo, and there you go. Very handy, so I would always have that on. The next one is machining preferences here. Um, the only thing I really check on and off here is uh, what uh, uh, tool holders I'm using. You don't see a whole lot of BT35s, not a whole lot of BT45s. Um, same with CAT, not a whole lot of 45s out there. Um, 65s, not a whole lot, a whole lot out there either. So you can uncheck those as you need to. And um, so that will reduce how many tool choices you have when you're uh, creating parts. File, uh, we're leaving this just default here, it's fine. Uh, I would suggest if you're saving files on a server, something like that, you enable the auto save. And I usually put about five minutes in there and I always do it as backup files. So that way you have two files, the original one and the backup one. So in case you somehow corrupt the first one, you always have a backup file. But remember, it's automatically updating the file if you have it open. Rest of these default here, post processor comments. I uncheck meters and feet because we really don't work in meters and feet anymore. Uh, but we do like to know how large the program is to see if it'll fit Mario on our machine. So keep this checked off. I uncheck work group comments and uncheck these four here. Um, mainly just a lot of extra comments that we really don't need in the, uh, when we post the code. Palm setup, this is mainly for RS-232. You can set up your different machines here and baud rates, bits, stop bits to match your CNC. Okay. Nowadays, most machine, machining centers uh, are USB or network. Okay. Intermediate tooling, we'll go over that on a, uh, another video on here. A couple of last items here. As you know, this view menu has been around for a while. If you left click, dot view, front view, right side view, isometric view, and of course nose in the previous view. Many people don't know that you can use the right mouse button and have the opposite effect. So here we're looking at the top of the bar. You can see the plus here. If you right click the top, notice you're looking at the bottom of the file now and looking at the negative side. Same with this one, front view. If I right click, back view right side view, left side view, isometric view, and right click, isometric view, upside down. So a couple of uh, nice features there as well. Gibbs also supports um, uh, space balls, space navigators, uh, through light 3D connections, things like that, in which you can um, use your space navigator, rotate your part, zoom up or down, do anything you need to with one hand uh, makes things a lot faster. Thank you for watching this first video.